Mr. K. Shri Kant, Chief Human Resource Officer and VP at Britannia Industries Limited. Sir has pursued his gra graduation in BS Psychology from Kerala Thanks. University and MSW in Personal Management and Industrial Relations from Loyola College. Sir has been working in various HR domains in India and overseas. He has been HR professional with about 19 years of multifaceted experience in strategic HRM, industrial relations, recruitment and selection, training and management development, performance management, competency building, compensation and benefits, EHR, HR operations and quality, HR excellence, HR shared services, and HR outsourcing. He also has extensive experience in man manufacturing, software, ITEC, and BPO in global business environment. Sir, I welcome you to enlighten the student managers with your words of wisdom. The stage is all yours. You. We have exactly one hour and three speakers to go. So you, I hope you understand the communication. OK. So it's for me or the students? OK. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good morning for some of you. I saw some of you sleeping when I walked in. OK, so stay with me for 15 minutes. So my time is cut short into 15 minutes. So I'll just uh, focus on few slides. The topic I'm going to cover today is uh, tipping point leadership. How many of you heard about concept called tipping point leadership? OK, you heard about the book called a tipping point. Good. So tipping point leadership is all about change management. So when you talk about tomorrow's leadership or tomorrow's leaders, one of the competency required for tomorrow's leader or leaders is managing change. You agree? Why it is very important managing change? Why it is important? Because our environment is very dynamic and changing very fast. What is, what is that? Yeah, a lot of changes in the environment, a lot of changes in the economic environment, political environment, social environment, a lot of changes happening in the corporate environment. So only one thing which is going to keep constant is change. So as leaders, our ability to manage change is going to be one of the key comments. Here is my learning in GE, when I was heading GE business in India and abroad, and when I was managing in Toyota, as well as Computer Associates, that was my last assignment before joining Britannia. And in Britannia, in last 18 months, Britannia is one of the FMCG, which have 100 years of history in India. And in the FMCG is one of the, it's called the fast moving consumer goods, isn't it? So the word fast itself is very evident that the changes has to happen. So I'll share some of the thoughts in next 13 minutes how you can manage change and what are the challenges associated with the managing change. Okay, so one of the challenges all of us struggle as leaders of corporate world or leaders of a social environment is how to build a company that fit for the future and fit for the human beings. So the two underlying word is how, how to build a company fit for the future. All of us struggle quarter by quarter. Especially when you work in an American firm, you know the meaning of how to survive quarter by quarter because the analyst world or the investment world or the Wall Street look at a corporate at a quarter by quarter. How can I show my corporate profitable this quarter and how can I show profitable for next quarter? Nobody looks at a long term organizational view. So that is why a lot of organizations get into greed and get into trouble. So as leaders, the paradigm shift is required to how to build an organization not for next quarter, but how to build an organization for future. That future is for decades together. The companies I worked like Toyota or GE has been in existence for many, many decades. The company which I work today, Britannia, has been in existence for 100 years. So you can see these are the corporates which has been built for decades, not built for quarter or few years. So that is one of the challenges many organization leaders face today. And how to build an organization that fit for human being. When you build an organization for next quarter, you never think of an, a corporate which is fit for human being, isn't it? When you build an organization for next quarter, 
you take a big ax and cut people and chop people because you want to show the bottom line and top line improvement then you go and axing people their emotions and their feelings and their sentiments so one of the long term players of any organization building capability is they build for a future organization not for short term in this how we can manage change so let us quickly jump into tipping point normally i do this training program for two days so it's very difficult to sell this concept in 10 minutes to 15 minutes but i'll try to share these thoughts and send you the slides then if time permits i'll come back again and we can go through the entire methodology and toolkit of tipping point and change management so what is tipping point in the tipping point is a concept which borrowed from physics can anybody read this first three bullets or the first sentence yep go ahead So, yeah, go ahead, read it completely. Tipping point is knowledge. The point at which a dominant technology or player defines the standard of an industry resulting in winner take all, economies of scale and scope. Okay. So, the concept of tipping point is moving an object from current state to an altogether different state. That is the definition of tipping point in physics. When it applies to corporate and economics, it is saying that how will you take an organization? or an enterprise from current state to altogether a different state and you get economics of scale, profitability and transformation into altogether a different height. That is called the concept of tipping point. Have you seen any organization doing this? Is any organization coming to your mind who has done that kind of a work? IBM. Good example, IBM. GE. I have seen during Jack Welch time, Jack Welch took over GE when the company was 40 billion US dollars when he left GE, it was 150 billion US dollars. So that's the tipping point he created. And he created not only the economics of scale, but he also created best practice in terms of Six Sigma, best practice in terms of talent management, best practice in terms of organization culture. So he created not only economics of scale in tipping point, but he also created best practice. He has been considered as the most admired leader in the world for three decades because he created a tipping point. Today's tipping point, when you come to Apple, Apple is a tipping point, isn't it? Because it come up with the innovation and technology. The iPads of the world are tipping point in economic because it created altogether a different scale in terms of technology and profitability. Facebook is a new tipping point, isn't it? Facebook could create a new tipping point because they come up with a altogether new economics of scale and enterprise. So all these are possible now, if you really look at tipping point organization and leaders who created such a wonderful organization, we can learn something different from this. That's what I want to share in next 10 minutes. Okay, but when time permits, just remind me. I'll come and or remind your faculty members a lot to learn from this organization and this methodology. How you create and each one need to imbibe this leadership quality in you. And the tools and methodology, important is the tools and methodology, how they did it. Can we imbibe as leaders in this methodology, this philosophy and leadership style in each one of us? Okay, Jack Welch is one example which any tipping point book talks about it. What Jack Welch did, all the arrows what you see in terms of top line, bottom line and market cap. Everything going up, steep up, isn't it? All threes are revenue, net operating income, that is the, pardon, top line and bottom line and market cap everything went up and business week at that time created jack welch as a hero in world and many fortune magazines oh, sorry fortune magazine and very number one magazine the globe created jack welch as most admired leader and he has been cited as the tipping, tipping point leader next one i don't know how many of you heard about william bratton the tipping point book talks about william bratton he is the police commissioner, wherever he transferred in US, whichever the city or whichever the geography he has been transferred, he has created evolution or revolution in that particular state or that particular geography and reduced the crime rate, reduced the uh, whatever the uh, illegalities in what is happening in the state and changed that place and created a record in that place. So Bratton is considered as a tipping point leader. So these two guys created a revolution or created leadership capability in the 
history of uh, what do you call mankind. So can you create a tipping point in your career? Can you? Yes. Now let us take next eight minutes to understand how can you create that? And what are the quick learnings we can have it from these leaders and what the tipping point leadership is all about? Okay. Can anybody quickly read what is tipping point or change management talks about? How what these leaders have done it? Who want to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Somebody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, fast. How can you overcome the hurdles facing any organization struggling to change? Addiction to the status quo, limited resources, demotivated employees, and opposition from powerful resident interests. Yeah. So when these leaders, whether it's Jack Wilch or IBM leader or any leaders where I also worked together in many corporate, the tipping point leaders managed to change from many resistance coming from many corners of the organization. They overcome this resistance and they systematically changed whether it's a people resistance or political resistance coming from people or process resistance or technology resistance or external resistance coming from customer or vendors or government or social resistance coming, they overcome this resistance in a very systematic way and manage the change of the mindset of the people and the culture of the organization taking to the next level of transformation. Okay, so I'll uh, skip a couple of uh, areas because in the of time, not every ex executive have Bratton's and Jack Wilch presence or leadership style. I worked with the Jack Wilch and I know what Jack Wilch energy passion and charismatic leadership style. Not that all of us can imitate Jack Welch leadership style, energy and passion. But what Bratton and Jack Welch did is they created a book of knowledge in terms of leadership processes, leadership methodology and management tools and methodologies. This is available as a best practices and as young leaders you can learn these leadership methodologies and practices. That's what we can do. We may not have the charismatic style of these many leaders. This is something which they nurtured or maybe this is, they got it as part of their genetics, whatever it may be. But what we can do as learn this management tools and processes and methodology they have created in their respective organization. So what are these is it is available. This other organization created or uh, borrowed as best practice and implemented. That's what I have done it in my last five to six years of career. I took these methodologies and tools from these organizations and implemented in my work and I find great result. I will share you quickly in the next five minutes what are the tools of change management, what Jack Welch used in GE or Bratton used in his career and how they transformed organization and create a tipping point in their career and organization. Make sense? That S is not very powerful. Okay. I'll uh, skip all these things. These are the uh, change management methodologies. I'll just uh, take few examples of this. So when these tipping point leaders managed organizational transformation, they focused on basically two aspects of their transformation. The first aspect they focused on Q. Q is quality of solution. Whether it's a customer satisfaction or manufacturing, or sales or people or talent management, whatever it may be, that is called quality of solution. Whenever they have confronted a problem, they always created quality solution to address that problem. That is called quality of solution. That is what you can see Q. Quality of solution will not get you desired result. Why? Can anybody tell why the quality of solution never get you the desired result? Because if you really go and ask Chidambaram, the question, how can you transform economic recession happening in India? How can you take from projected 5% growth to 8% growth? He'll get wonderful solution, isn't it? Yes or no? Then why that is not working? Or why you cannot implement that? Acceptance is not there. Because he has a wonderful idea how we can get 10% growth or 8% growth in next two quarters. He will give any number of ideas. But the problem will be acceptance will not be there from his own party men or his own fellow colleagues. So the acceptance is very important. Any corporate leaders, they will have wonderful ideas and wonderful solution, but how can you get the acceptance? So the tipping point leaders or change management 
the focus is not only on quality solution, how will you get acceptance in the organization so that you can get the efficacy of change or effectiveness. So all these leaders not only focused on quality solution and acceptance to get efficacy. Think of a 10 point scale, you have a great solution that is called a Q. In 1 to 10 point scale you have a 9 that is solution but acceptance is 0. What will be the efficacy? 0. Think of another situation, the quality of solution is 3 but acceptance is 10. What will be the efficacy? 30. So which is better, the first one or the second one? Yeah. The tipping point leaders know how to drive efficacy through greater acceptance by the stakeholders at the early stage of transformation. That's what the tipping point leaders did it. The last slide I'll focus on in interest of time is the technical strategy and the culture and organization. This is Q, this is A, the bridge is through effective leaders and they do it with the speed. Now one more slide I'll show you then maybe I'll take one or two questions. When G we did it, this transformation or tipping point change or transformation is all about marrying quality solution with acceptance and we need to have a toolkit to do that. So we call this toolkit as CAP. What we wear CAP? It is not that CAP, CAP, CAP. C stands for change, A stands for acceleration, P stands for process. Change acceleration process. That means change is inevitable. You as leaders need to drive change in any organization, but how you can drive accelerated change? Change itself is difficult, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. But how will you drive accelerated change? That means if competition take to change three years, how can you change in three months? Is it sound interesting? Yes or no? Yes. I know it's end of the day very difficult to get energy. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So change itself is difficult, but as a smart leaders and smart organization, how can you drive change at a faster pace is called a CAP tools and methodology does. So what G has done it is when Cotter, who is a specialist in change management from Harvard, when he return a book on change management, Cotter was invited in GE campus and Cotter was asked to develop a toolkit called a CAP, change acceleration process. Normally we do two days of training. I do two days of training on leaders on how to use CAP as a change acceleration process and a methodology for leaders. I will show you last slide. I know it may not be as visible as what I could see from here. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, I'll walk you through quickly what CAP does it. So in GE we call Q, five steps of Q here. In GE this is called Six Sigma methodology of transformation of quality. Define, measure, analyze, improve and control. These are the five steps of quality implementation of solution. How will you define a problem? How will you measure the current level of performance and desired level of performance? How will you analyze the root causes of inefficiency? How will you improve it and how will you control it? So that is the Q part of it. Then acceptance part of it is what we call it in this side of it, which have five steps. These five steps, first one is how will you create a need for change? The first step is called, how will you create a shared need for change? Only the CEO feel that we need to change and other members feel that we need not change. Can we get desired result? No. How will you create a shared need for change is the first step. Once you create a shared need for change, the next question comes, how will you create a shared vision for change? What is the next question? Shared vision for change. The third one is, how will you mobilize commitment from all the stakeholders? For example, if Chidambaram feels today we have to change our economy, so first one is creating a need for change. Second one is vision for change. How will you move from 5% projected growth to 8% that is a vision for change. 8 is the vision for change. Then how will you mobilize commitment from different stakeholders in the ministry as well as opposition and different parties. It's called the third step in change called mobilizing commitment for change. Then fourth step is called changing systems and structure. Then we have to change systems and structure for change. The last one is ensure that change lasts long. Not only one quarter we got the growth of 7% or 8%. Every quarter for next few years we need to get growth. So these are the five steps. What are the five steps? 
creating a need for change, shared need for a change, shared vision for change, mobilizing commitment for change and last two, two changing, changing systems and structure and ensure that change lasts long. So the lessons learned so far, I will summarize it in one minute then I know other speakers are waiting. The first one is if you ask me next few decades as leaders one of the greatest competence we should have is managing change. You agree? Again the guys who are sleeping let, let us, okay, let us how can we change ourselves, how can we change our fellow colleagues, how can we change organization. The second one he said if you are looking for a change management the biggest hurdles comes from the mindset biggest change come from the acceptance of the different stakeholders on the quality of solutions all of us have in mind. So if you want the efficacy of change you should have acceptance by the stakeholders on the change. The quality of solutions is not enough but the acceptance is required so Q into A is equal to efficacy of change. So acceptance is need to be focused. So the acceptance if you really look at there are good methodology available that methodology is called CAP change acceleration process that have five steps creating a shared need for change, shared vision for change, mobilizing commitment for change, changing systems and structure and change last long. So these are the five steps uh, some of the best companies uses it. These have tools and methodology for each step that is what some of the tools I just narrated it like stakeholder analysis, resistance analysis, 3D all these are tools there are 104 tools are available in this five steps. If you use this systematically then you can drive changes like Jack Welch and Bratton has mentioned in their organization to drive change that is what all about. So only one thing is going forward will be permanent that is change and the managing change itself is re-returning nowadays. People say the, the, the way we manage change has to change. So that is what the research has been done. Thank you very much. If you have one question I will take it then we will